Welcome to the video presentation of hysteroscopic myoma resection for deep submucous and intramural myomas. As per the new AAGL classification, myomas are classified from type 1 to type 7. Whereas resecting type 0 and type 1 myomas is easy, resecting type 2, 3 and 4 myomas is difficult due to the risk of perforation. If we understand the forces acting on a fibroid, it becomes clear that the position of a submucous myoma is determined by the stronger of two opposing forces, the myometrium behind the fibroid trying to push the fibroid into the cavity and the myoma capsule between the fibroid and the cavity holding it back. If these restraining capsular fibers are incised, the myoma automatically starts projecting into the cavity due to the force of the underlying myometrium. This is best demonstrated by a technique called Hamu's uterine massage. Reduction of the inflow pressure of the distending medium results in the fibroid bulging into the uterine cavity. This is a patient with a type 2 submucous myoma partly projecting into the uterine cavity and partly located in the uterine wall. Cursory examination shows the rest of the cavity to be normal without any apparent pathology. Resection is started and is easily continued up till the level of the endometrial lining. However, at the endometrial lining where the fibroid is flush to the endometrial lining, the surgeon is faced with the dilemma of either cutting into the myometrium to scrape out the fibroid, thereby increasing the risk of perforation versus leaving a part of the fibroid behind. It is at this stage that the hysteroscope is removed and a vigorous bimanual massage is given causing the myometrium to contract and push the fibroid into the cavity. After uterine massage, when the hysteroscope is reinserted, the fibroid has shifted slightly towards the cavity, making it more approachable for resection. This process can be repeated. This is a patient with a type 3 posterior wall submucous fibroid. The fibroid is only slightly jutting or touching the endometrial cavity but most of the fibroid is still within the uterine wall. It is only after the first primary cut has been made that the fibroid is seen. Notice the difference in color and texture between the myoma and the surrounding normal myometrium. Resection is continued taking two or three successive cuts until the fibroid is flush to the level of the endometrial lining or even a little deeper till the surgeon feels comfortable to continue the resection. However, after the first two or three cuts have been made, the surgeon reaches a point where he has to either dissect be beyond the normal endometrial lining or stop the resection there thereby leaving a part of the fibroid still attached to the uterus. It is at this stage that the surgeon dissects between the fibroid capsule and the normal myometrium using a cold loop that is only mechanical force only activating the electrode in short bursts of current to detach the myoma from its attachment to the myometrium. Using this technique, the myoma is gradually peeled off from its attachment to the normal myometrium. Using this technique, the risk of perforation is minimized and also the risk of thermal damage to the surrounding endometrium is minimal. Here the fibroid is seen to be completely detached from its base. This is a patient with a type 4 myoma completely intramural and not indenting the endometrium. A good mapping of the fibroid by ultrasound clearly shows the depth of the fibroid beyond the endometrium as well as the safety margin up to serosa. It is only after the first one or two cuts on the endometrium that the fibroid starts becoming visible as a diffuse elevation over the anterior wall. Following the same principle as discussed earlier, rather than dissecting into the myometrium using a burrowing technique and increasing the risk of perforation, the extent of the fibroid 
is first carefully determined by the operating surgeon. Next, using a cold loop dissection technique, an attempt is made to push the fibroid away from its attachment to the normal myometrium. This displacement is sometimes towards the surgeon and sometimes away from the surgeon in a gradual effort to shift the fibroid away from its original position. Using the mechanical force, the fibroid is pushed away with the resectoscope loop and gradually the fibroid is seen to be shifting closer to the endometrial cavity. This displacement is sometimes accompanied by short bursts of energy in order to release the restraining fibers over the circumference of the fibroid that are holding it back. By this gradual pushing and pulling, the fibroid is seen to shift closer to the cavity from its original intramural location. This process is meticulously continued until a deep intramural fibroid is converted into a more submucous one. As we can see here, the fibroid is slowly but surely getting displaced towards the endometrial cavity until such a point where the loop of the resectoscope is able to be placed behind the fibroid and is able to actually lift the fibroid away, exposing the normal pink myometrium behind the fibroid. Visualization of the normal myometrium confirms that the entire mass of the fibroid is now submucous in location. Effectively, a type 4 myoma has been converted into a type 1 myoma, completely eliminating the need for burrowing into the uterine cavity and thereby decreasing the risk of perforation. Note that conventional myoma resection must always have the activated electrode moving away from the fundus of the uterus and towards the surgeon. The pushing movement towards the fundus must be done without activating the electrode or by activating it in very short bursts only to release the restraining fibers. Again, it must be specifically emphasized that these maneuvers can only be attempted once the surgeon has mastered the conventional resection technique. The beginner must fully understand that activating an electrode and pushing it towards the fundus will lead to perforation of the uterus. Also, the current may be transmitted to adjacent abdominal organs like the intestines or the urinary bladder and therefore utmost care is needed in order to avoid perforation. In conclusion, cold loop dissection and Hamu's uterine massage are useful techniques for converting a deep intramural myoma into a submucous one. This technique minimizes the risk of perforation and yet ensures that little or no remnant of the fibroid is left behind. Using a combination of these techniques, the surgeon can convert a deep intramural myoma into a submucous myoma, thereby making resection easier, safer and quicker. As you can see, most of the fibroid bits have been removed. The last bit of the fibroid has now been excised. Thank you so much for your patience.